being a never-ending process. One must engage itself in continuous learning, not just for professional development, but also for professional aspects. As Talil Cameron says, the teacher who is indeed wise does not bid you to enter the house of kingdom or of wisdom, but rather leads you to transform of your mind. Let me begin you by giving a warm welcome to our school-based seminary orientation on the guidelines on the implementation of the result-based per performance management system for the school years 2020 to 2021. First, may I request Ma Melvet Obergansha, picture three, for the opening prayer. Please stand. Galing po natin ang presensya ng ating pong may kapal. Sa nga ng Ama, anak ng Espiritu Santo. Amen. Panginoon, pinupuri ka namin at pinasasalamatan sa bawat araw na dumadaan sa aming buhay. Salamat po sa aming mga pamilya, sa aming mga kaibigan, git lalo po sa biyaya ng trabaho na meron kami. Panginoon, sa pagpapatuloy po ng aming mga gawain, iniatas niya po sa, iniatas niya po sa amin. Dalangin po namin ang inyong gabay sa tulong po ng aming mga heads. Fortitude in battling for the continuity of learning. It incessantly develops learning resources and upskills its teaching and non-teaching personnel for a continuous delivery of quality, accessible, and relevant education to the learners through blended and printed modular learning modalities. The conduct of the orientation on the guidelines on the implementation of the results-based performance management system for school year 2020-2021 primarily aims to generate awareness among the school's personnel on the comprehensive guidelines including tools, protocols, and timelines in the implementation of RPMS as anchored on the school's basic education learning continuity plan. Second phase of the RPM cycle, I want to adopt one of the segments during the national webinar on RPMS that us fast talk. All right, so the questions as well as the answers from this segment were also taken from that segment during the national webinar. So anybody can give uh, his or her answer in these questions. Shall we start with the first question? How many classroom observations shall we have Two. for this school year? Two. Two. Yes. Maybe see if your answer is right. Two. All right, we have two classroom observations for this school year. Our next question, how many objectives will we observe per observation period? What's your answer? Mom, blow again. Your answer is? Anyone from the group? Mom, Ella. Mom, Ella, what's your answer? Three. All right. Can you see if the answer is three? Yeah, I think uh, we'll be awarding the most participative uh, uh, participant in our seminar. And that goes to Mom Gloria Montiel. All right, let us see. Okay, three. The answer is three, so you're right, Mom Gloria. Our next question. What is the minimal number of observer per observation period? What's your answer? Minimum number of observer. Yes, sir, George. One. Let us see. All right, one, okay. Our next question, when will the first classroom observation be done? January to January. March. January to March. Mom, blow again. Okay, maybe see if your answer, mom, is correct. Yeah. All right, all right. So our first classroom observation will happen between January to March 2021. All right, next question. When will be the second classroom observation? Okay, April to May according to Mam Law. All right. So after March, and that will be April. After March until the end of the school year. All right. Our next question: Can we still include in our portfolio or accomplishments last October to December 2020? Awarding 
Alright, what mom Ella you're raising your hand? What's your answer, Mom? Yes. 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 Mom Marietta? Yes to? Yes. Yes. Alright. Sir. Okay. Alright. So the answer is it depends. Okay. So only crafted and utilized items during October to December 2020 be included in the portfolio. Alright. So actually these are the initial questions. Okay, for the second phase of the RPNS cycle. And then we will be finding out whether our answers are right as we go through this phase. Alright, so uh, just like what we said, the second phase of the performance, uh, the second phase of the RPNS cycle is the performance monitoring and coaching. So it happens year round from the onset until the end of the school year. However, we have to go through a checkpoint during the middle of the school year, and that will happen on March 2021. So in our checkpoint, we will be tracking progress of the performance of our teachers for the past few months. Okay? It is also in this phase that uh, technical assistance is extended to our teachers for them to improve or enhance their performance. Okay? So what are the activities that we have to undergo in this second phase or PM cycle? So of course we have the performance monitoring and coaching, okay, which happens year round. Year round from the onset until the end of the school year. Another activity is the mid-year review and assessment. That is the checkpoint. Okay? where we will be tracking progress, how far have our teachers gone with their performance. So this uh, phase of the RPN cycle enables the rater and the ratee to have an interaction and discuss matters like the uh, classroom observations, the means of ver verifications, the uh, critical incidences, and the like. Okay? The rater and the ratee should have an interaction. All right, what are the forms that we are going to use in this phase, okay? We have the RPMS tools, the IPCRF, the self-assessment tool, the IPCRF development plan using the uh, performance mo uh, monitoring and coaching form, and then the mid-year review. These forms will be discussed later as we go through this phase. Observe. Now, these critical incidences or the weak points, okay, noticed by the reader should be taken down low, should be uh, evaluated, and should be given recommendations by the readers. Okay, because these critical incidences would be the basis for the reader to coach and to mentor the reader. We do not only write there the weak points, we also write the strong points of the teachers. How about on the output column? Okay, what will we write under output column? So in that output column, we will be uh, writing materials or tangible evidences that would support our remarks under critical incidents. Let's have an example. For the last critical incidents, Again, uh, the use of ICT as shown during classroom observation has to be enhanced. Okay? So a weak point of the Reiki. What is the output or what is the evidence, tangible evidence that would support your claim on the critical incidents? IMS use did not fully capture the interest of the learners. Okay, another example. The uh, Remarkable uh, performance of the teacher. Love book of daily incidents in her classroom is regularly done with a reflection every week. So strong points for the teacher. What is the evidence or the, the tangible evidence for that remark? Love book serves as evidence for anecdotal records and journal of best practices. Okay? How about on the impact of impact on job or action plan? So impact, what is the effect of the critical incidence description? Okay, what is the effect? 
This column requires the readers to be objective and honest in giving remarks or impact because that is the only way that we can give technical assistance or we can help our teachers in improving or enhancing his performance. If there is a limit to who are right negative, then we should because this would be our basis for coaching and mentoring. Okay, that's our example there. The ICT, the use of ICT as uh, shown during classroom observation has to be enhanced and then our output, the IM, and then what's the impact or the effect? Less participation among learners. And the other one, what is the effect? To easily address the learners' needs. And then, the last column, we have the signature of the reader and the ready. Because just like what I said while ago, this is a proof that there was really a technical assistance extended to the ready. Okay? Let's move. All right. So performance coaching and feedback are ongoing process. That's why it happens year round, from the onset until the end of the school year. So these are provided by the reader and shall be sought by the ready to improve work performance and behavior. All right. To wrap up the performance under the seven phase of the RPM cycle, okay. The portfolio preparation and organization will happen on March 2021 and it should not stop there. It should be continued until the end of the school year, which will be on June. Next, so there are two RPMS tools or teacher performance assessment instruments. The RPMS tool for teacher one to three or the proficient teachers and the RPMS tool for master teacher one to four or the highly proficient teachers. These RPMs tools were really crafted specifically for this period, for this for today's educational platform. That's why we could see there space RPMs tool in the time of COVID-19, specifically for this school year. Alright, so uh, the objectives, the 11 objectives were already read and explained to us a while ago by Mount Law. We will just look into uh, this first set, okay? So we notice on the first set of the uh, RPMS objectives that one and three are not new in the RPMS cycle. They have been observable indicators even before the pandemic. Okay, for our next set of uh, RPMS objectives, number five and number seven are objectives especially selected for the school year as learners and the people that was the group in general have been affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. The way teachers adjust and modify the teaching and learning delivery is captured in this year's RPNS. That's the, that's the very soul why the RPNS was modified, okay? In order to suit our present educational platform. This is our last uh, set of RPNS objectives for the proficient and the high proficient teachers. Later on, when our fellow speakers will be discussing the MOV and supporting MOV in each of these objectives, we will be uh, discussing them again. I'm just uh, presenting them to you. Alright, so there are 37 indicators in the Philippine Professional Standards for Teachers or the PTSD. And out of 37, 11 priority indicators were chosen for the school year based on being more responsive and appropriate to the current context of the teachers, learners, and the learning environment. Okay, and from the from the 11 uh, priority indicators, there are seven classroom observable objectives for both proficient and highly proficient teachers. The performance indicators of these objectives are identified for quality except for objective six, which has quality and timeliness. So out of the 11 priority indicators for the RPMS 2020-2021, seven are classroom observable objectives. And from that seven classroom observable objectives, the objectives that would be observed and need COT are objectives one, five, and seven. Okay, objectives one, five, and six. 
Second, later on we'll be building what are these objectives that we see only. And then only two observations are required for the entire school year. Objectives 2, 3, and 4 require supplementary materials as MOV, while objective 6 require evidence that show feedback to learners. Only two MOV that show evidence of this objective are required for the entire school year. What are these MOV and supporting MOVs later will be discussed by one of our fellow master teachers. There are four. So there are 11 priority objectives of the RPLS. Seven are classroom observable and four are non-classroom observable objectives for both proficient and highly proficient teachers. The performance indicators I identified for quality in objective 8 and quality and efficiency in objective 9 to 11. Plus factor is objective 2. Again, the MOVs of all the objectives will be discussed later. So, to sum it up, okay, the, uh, what's that? The boxes marked with green are the seven classroom observable indicators, while the four marked as red are the non classroom observable indicators. Okay, so uh, what are the objectives of the three classroom observable indicators that need COT? Okay, number one, apply knowledge of content within and across curriculum teaching areas. Another one, plan and deliver teaching strategies that are responsive to this what's that okay anyway it was discussed objective number five and then the last one is objective number seven so these are the three classroom observable indicators that means cot okay so for the raters to be guided okay engaging or measuring the performance of the teachers, okay, rubrics are provided also in this memorandum. Alright, so there are two types of means of verification or the MOV. What is the main MOV which is the non-negotiable or the must help or the mandatory MOV. Another one is the supporting MOV which will support the main MOV. Again, this will be discussed later, I think, by Sir Jones. Okay, and uh, I think this is my last slide. What is the role of the supervisors in the classroom observation process? So the supervisors may use the COT or PNS rubrics and observe teachers. Their feedback may be used to provide technical assistance to the school head of the observed teacher. However, their ratings will not form part of the teacher's RPNS rating and portfolio. So supervisors may observe teachers, however, their ratings do not have bearing in the rating of the teacher in the RPNS. RPNS. So they may give uh, technical assistance, they may give feedback to the school head of the teacher. Okay, another one, based on debit order to series 2015, Annex A page 18, only the master teacher, head teacher, and school head can rate the teacher. Okay, that's my part. A continuation of phase two will be given by Mom Ella and later Rachel. Thank you so much, Mom Marisa, for well, it's pretty nice and well explained. Uh, phase two. So, we are to So, we are to our dear OIC principal and at the same time, the EPS in Values Education, Dr. Sumito Balatan, sir, good morning. To our head teacher for Ma'am Helen Picabreros, ma'am, good morning. To our motherly, they're both motherly, ah, pero na lang. Good morning. 
Dati pa rin nanay ko si Mang Levi, kung may siya, dati na kapagawin niya ako ako sa kapagawaan ko dito ang minsan. Mam Liberty de la Cruz, our head teacher 3, good morning, ma'am. To our uh, coordinators, master teachers, dear colleagues, good morning po sa ating lahat. So, bahagi po sa ating pagpapaunlad sa larangan ng pagtuturo, ay ang classroom observation. Ito po ay upang mapaunlad natin ang ating teaching and learning process at ito ay dapat na tumatama sa standard and expectation na inasahan sa atin ng kagawaran ng edukasyon. Okay? So, ang gasted. Ngayon po, ang topic ko ay ang general guidelines for the RPMS al Alternative Classroom Observation. Ngayong 2020 o school year 2020, ang ating napaugali ang classroom observation ay hindi na may sasakatuparan. Dahil wala na po tayong face-to-face, -face. kaya naman ang DepEd ay naglabas ng memorandum last January 11, 2021 at ito ay ang RPMS General Guidelines on Alternative Classroom Observation and this guideline is considered or intended lamang po for school year 2020-2021 due to the absence of or limited capacity for face-to-face -face learning. So dito, sa guideline na ito ay meron tayong tatlong option at nakadepende sa delivery o delivery modalities ng teacher na ginagamit niya ngayon sa school year with their corresponding guidelines. Ang first option po natin ay ang online observation. A whole of teaching that utilizes video conferencing, live chat, instant messages, or in virtual collaboration ng learning. So this mode applies to the teacher na gumagamit ng online synchronous of learning regardless the number of classes and learners. So ito po ay quiz sa mga teacher na gumagamit o nagtuturo ng live gamit ang uh, Google Meet, Zoom, at iba pang mga uh, application o platform na merong pag-uusap na live sa kanilang pag-aaral. Okay po? Ang pangalawang option po natin ay ang observation of a video lesson. Video lesson refers to learning materials to a video recorded or videotape lesson kung saan ginagamit ito sa online asynchronous. So, this can be uploaded to YouTube, Google Classroom, or any online platform. So, dito naman sa number two option, pwede i-consider ni teacher ang option na ito kung ang option number one ay hindi pwede or hindi niya ginagamit na modality o na mode sa pagtuturo. This applies to the teachers who will adopt the online asynchronous o gumagamit ng video sa kanyang klase at ito ay ina-upload niya lamang sa kanyang Google Classroom. So maliwanag po na ang online observation ay may live chat o live na pagtuturo na kung saan doon sa online ay i-invite niya ang kanyang observer sa kanyang klase. While uh, observation of a video lesson ay uh, online asynchronous siya, gumagamit siya ng recorded tape video lesson na ina-upload niya. Na kung saan, dito rin ina-access ni observer later. Okay po? Pero dito sa ating pangalawang option, meron dapat tayong kailangan uh, mga reminder 
reminder na dapat na uh, gawin. So una, yung video lesson na ibibigay ni teacher sa kanyang observer ay kailangan part po ng kanyang uh, supplementary materials na kanyang ginamit sa kanyang pagtuturo. Hindi pwede yung gamitin niya yung ginamit sa tuli base at sa radio base na instruction. Another is, or dito sa number one, kailangan teacher make po ang video lesson na ipapas ni, uh, ni teacher sa kanyang observer. Sa pangalawa po, kailangan sa pagkahanda ng yung video lesson ay dapat naka-align ang yung yung lesson o video sa map or the most essential learning competency. Or, kailangan SLM based siya o nakabasay din sa self-learning module. Another, eto naman is kailangan maging teki-teki din si teacher. Diba? Kasi, i-upload niya yung kanyang video lesson sa mga um, mga tawag natin dyan yung mga application platform na bago o social media ngayon na social platforms ngayon na kung natin kagaya na so, uh, Google Drive uh, Google Classroom ano pa ba yung mga Edmundo Ed, ano? ano yung Edmundo Ano ba yung Moodle? Doon ko uh, ina-upload yung mga video lesson. Okay. Kasi ako Google Classroom lang yung ginagamit ko. Okay? Cloud. Ano yung cloud yun naman? Or kung hindi naman, yes, ilalagay niya yung video lesson niya sa flash drive o kaya sa CD-ROM, yun yung isasagwit niya. Okay po? At ang pangatlo natin, at pang huling uh, alternative classroom observation ay ang observation of a demonstration teaching via learning action cell or lab. So ngayon, gagamitin na yung lab sa RPMS. So ma ma mapukan na natin siya ngayon. So dito, dito sa option 3, Pwede yung piliin ni teacher ang option 3 kung ang option 1 and 2 ay wala sa kanyang modality of learning na ginagamit. Dahil dito, uh, ang teacher ay gumagamit lamang siya ng pure modular learning. Ano yung pure modular learning? Ito yung gumagamit ng mga print, printers, mga digital format, radio base and TV based instruction. So, kung ang teacher ay uh, pure modular siya, dito siya sa option 3. Okay po? So, kailangan po natin alalahanin na pwede lang gamitin ni teacher ang option 3 kung hindi pwede sa kanya yung option 1 and 2. 